Hey everybody, how's it going? In today's video, I will be replacing the parking sensor bumper clips for my bumper parking sensors. Yeah, I also have to respray them because I bought some new ones and they were silver. So I have to respray them in the original color of the car, which is volcano gray. So if you remember a few videos back, I tore the bumper off my car, I stupidly tore the front bumper off my car because I'd done a stupid maneuver and rip, hit off a van, whatever. I tore the bumper off the car, which tore the uh, parking sensors out and broke all of the clips. So I had to buy new clips. I'll show you now what it's like on the screen. If you press your parking sensor and one of them doesn't work, I'll show you now, okay? So if I press my parking button, you will see that my rear driver side parking sensor is not working. But if I take my handbrake off and hold my foot on the brake, you will see that my front parking sensors are also not working. So I got new parking sensors and new parking sensor clips to hold in the sensors. Um, as you can see, the sensor clips are silver and I need to spray them. Um, but the parking sensors, I don't actually need any parking sensors for the front at all. I got them just in case I did, but I also did get them because the rear one, I have one rear one on the driver's side and um, that is gone. But I don't know if it was just during the repair, they put too much paint on the sensor and that's why it's not working. Um, but I just got new ones anyway. They weren't expensive, so I just got them all just to make sure that I had enough uh, You know just in case one of them was broken and as you can see here These are where the clips go and the parking sensors and then the lacquer is peeling off here and then around here There's a big uh, chunk of lacquer gone and then down here. There's actually no paint or nothing down here This is the part that needs to be sprayed on the front wing anyway and then on the rear bumper, I have this uh, long, long scrape here. And then also I have no lacquer here. But as you can see, the, the bumpers really do need to be respread. There's even a mark along here. But this is the parking sensor that doesn't work. Before I go any further, could you just please give the video a like, a uh, thumbs up, um, subscribe, um, comment, um, whatever. Just all of that stuff. Thanks. So I got a can of spray for my car and um, this is the the code for my car your one might be different There are different grays uh, when it comes to these Honda Accords But my one is NH 736 M and it's actually called volcano gray and um, but I'm gonna use this um, All I have to do is just I've sanded these down all I have to do is just sand this last one here I'm just keying off the surface now as I said before I am NOT a painter so don't look at this thinking that I know what I'm doing I don't um, I'm just doing this quick job because this bumper has to be resprayed anyway. So I'm just going to do this, and then when I get the bumper resprayed, I'll remind them to fix these up or whatever. But I'm not going to spray this. I'm not going to sand this. I'm only going to spray this because this is the sensor. And if I spray that, oh sorry, if I sand that, it'll ruin the sensor. So a very light coat is all I'm going to do over the sensor just to color that black to the volc volcano gray that I'm looking for. So all I want to do is just sand this last one and then spray them all and then let them dry before I put some lacquer on them. So I've just sprayed up the clips here and um, I have to say it's very dark. I thought it was black when I first sprayed it out, but it's um, with the light shining on it here, you, you can see that it's gray. But when I sprayed it at, at first, it looks like it's black. So when I sprayed a test into this box, I thought it was actually black. Then you can see the, the shine, the, the, the metallic in there. When you look at it with the light on it, you can see that it's gray and you can see the little metallic flakes there in it. So I have to say it is, it's a, it's a lovely color. This is the color I wanted the car to be in when I was buying the car with the gray sort of um, cream interior and this black sort of uh, metallic on the outside. It's a beautiful color. I don't see any marks. This actually turned out okay as well. You can see the metallic on the sensor itself here now. I think these turned out okay. So I just need to put some lacquer on them when they dry up and I'm done then. Okay, so it's the next day and I've put some lacquer on and everything yesterday. Got late last night um, when I was doing this, so I didn't film anything. But this is the next day after the lacquer is dried up and everything, about two coats are put on. And just look at the shine from that metallic. My God, that is, I know these are only small little parts, but these look so good. They really do. Right, so I wanted to kind of give you a before and after of the bumper on, but I took the bumper off and then I realized, oh, I should have done it before and an after. 
So there's the bumper over there. Right, so I have my bumper in my shed here now and I'm not gonna do these exactly yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tint this chrome because I only done this one, as you remember. Um, but I, I still have to do the top one and the bottom one and maybe the Honda sign, I don't know yet. I'll take it off anyway and I'll, I'll have a look at doing the, the Honda sign. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna do that first before I do this, but I have to clean it up first because there's a lot of bugs and dead stuff all over it first. And as soon as all of this is done, then I will put in new light bulbs. And these are three-way light bulbs. Oh yeah, by the way, if anybody is wondering how to remove these chrome pieces so that you can actually tint them like I did with this one, I'll show you here at the back. If you look right here, you'll see there are screws that hold it in. There are also these clips. They're easy enough to take out. More screws here and more screws here, screw it here. So basically you just take off two screws and then those clips and then you're done. And then it just comes off like this and there are those clips at the back see and there where your screws go also if you're looking to see what type of camera i'm using or any of the equipment that i'm using there is a, a amazon affiliate links down below and um, you will also see some of the the things that i'm using like tools or the light bulbs and stuff they'll be all in the amazon links down below as well uh, there are affiliate links so i will get a small commission off them but it's it's not enough to quit your normal day job the, you literally it's like 10 cent or something off depends on what you buy but um yeah, so if you click the, click the links down below there, please, and buy something from Amazon. Thanks. Now, I got this top one done here anyway. Um, there's just a couple of little, I don't know if you can see them, there's kind of little bubbles here. I don't know, you can't even see them, can you? There may be a little bubble there. There's a couple of little bubbles on it, but it actually takes a lot of time to do. There's a lot of uh, different contours that you have to get around and stretch the, the tint around. Um, but you basically just work from this center point and then you work the most flattest parts first and then you sort of just uh, heat the corners there you need where you need to do it but it's um looks well anyway right so i'm just going to put this one back on and then i will work on the bottom one down there so that one is done this one is not I'm not actually going to do the honda sign because at the back there's no screws it's actually sort of riveted in so if i try to do the honda sign and use the heat on it it will start to mess up the ones to the side and i'm not taking back them back out now so i'm just going to leave the honda sign uh, chrome now i'm just taking this last part off here down the bottom right underneath this honda sign here there is there are a couple of screws underneath this and this goes here this is if you have honda sensing this is the camera this is the position of where the camera is um but i don't have honda sensing but anyway there are screws under here, there, and there, and this little tiny clip. Um, but these, when this goes back on, there are other screws here, here, and here. So I just wanted to show you what it looks like from the back. So there are these clips here that, as I said to you before, you just push them out. There are the screw holes here. But then, also, this has happened to a couple of mine already. This happened to the middle one before, and the top one i just done now. Um, these are falling off. Now... They're already, this could have happened when I damaged the car or during a previous crash or something, but they're falling off of those areas. See, there's one, meant to be one there sort of in the middle. There's one on the end down there, and then there's one on the end down here, and these clips. But these clips seem to be sufficient enough. As on the top one that I've done here, there is no screws all the way along, only one screw right there. But there's a clip here and a clip here, and this is not moving, this is solid. So the clips are actually holding it in. We don't really need the screws, but I did put the one that I have in here anyway. But these sort of clip things are falling off. So I do definitely need a new grill. I know this because it is damaged all over here. And this part, I don't even want to take this off because it's damaged here and it's damaged here. But it still works when I do have... Look, there's one there, actually, look. <laughs> yeah. So when I do have... Uh, when I do have the, the money or whatever, I will get a new grill. Um, I might even get a new bumper, we'll see. But I don't really need a new bumper, it's just the grill I need. Um, yeah, so if I'm in a scrapyard or something like that, I'll pick up a new grill. But the last time I was in a scrapyard, they didn't have one. So I just that's why I just never got one. This is working for now, so I will get a new grill when I get the chance to get a new grill. Or when I really need one, because I don't really need one now. It still works, so there's no point in getting rid of something that actually works. You can't see any of this damage anyway when the bonnet is closed down and the bumper's on. You can't see any of the damage. 
All right, so this is the last one now that I have to do. Um, I just want to clean up this chrome. There are a lot of marks you can see here that you won't be able to clean them out. Plus, they won't get seen anyway. Hey, look at him. Hello. What are you doing? Where are you going? What are you up to? Where are you going? Right, so it's not that easy to film this part here, right? But basically, you just get your tint and cut it to the length that of your piece that you're doing. And then make sure it's wide enough from this point if you know what I mean all the way down and you'll probably need like you will need a heat gun or a hairdryer and then a knife and definitely a lot of water you don't really need a cloth as much I'm using my fingers a lot but the cloth does help and um, maybe even a scissors there as well but um, it's very hard to film this to do to show you so I'll just try to show you a little bits here and there so firstly what I want to do is just wet everything down kind of soapy water it doesn't have to be too soapy just normal water will do but uh basically just wet the whole thing down now you just peel back the tint like this and stick it on all the way down it, you can move it around because of the water and then take the front part of the film off as well because all of these little cracks are mostly in the front part of the film you can't really see them here I'll be honest I didn't really leave myself much to play with here and um, because I want to wrap it underneath so it'll hold it tighter um, but yeah, basically this is what you do. You take the back film off, the front film off, and then wet everything and stick it down like this. And you can move it around because it's so wet then. And just keep it wet and uh, you can keep moving it around then. Um, it will dry up, don't worry. Um, yeah, so now I'm just going to start from the middle here, from the, the, the pointiest part basically. And to use the flattish, uh, flattest edge of the pointiest part. And just try, sort of work it out that way. You know, I'll just do one side sort of first, and then I'll move on to the other side. Now another little trick would be to cut um, slices into the plastic like this, so that it will release release that pressure that's around that area. And um, yeah, try not to use heat as too much. You just use the heat in the areas that you need it, like smaller parts. Now you can kind of see what I've done in this corner here. I'm trying to cut that area there so that it will sort of bend around here. It just takes a bit of time to just keep moving it around you know but that's all you have to do don't use too much heat use it only where you need to another thing is if you have too much tint like this um, just trim it off because it'll just get in the way and it'll keep sticking to the back and so on so just trim it out of the way it's just easier likewise with the clips here just sort of trim around them like this now, I don't know if you can see this on camera here but there's an indent right there right at this part here so right that there it sort of indents and it's a bit awkward to do to to wrap it in there so what you need to do is you need to move your your heat gun around that area now literally only about two seconds and then you'll see it shriveling up kind of like there you see it's sort of shriveled up there because it, i used it a little bit but it will shrivel up and you just pull it as straight as you can as tight as you can and then wrap it around the back here so that it will stick Right, so now you can see what I've done here. I sort of wrapped it in around here and I trimmed this piece off. So all I have to do is just stretch this now and wrap it back around it. And I will probably cut from that corner up there just like that so that I can wrap it around in that corner and it won't pinch. So now you can see what I've done there now. But at this point, I will have to pull this back up here and just take some of those air bubbles out because there's a big air bubble there. I don't know if you can see it. There's a big air bubble right there. I need to pull back out so yeah so I'll just pull peel this back up a bit release those air bubbles and then heat shrink it down and that's basically one side done so you can see the difference there so I'm just going to continue on on this side now on my own and do this part but the look at the back of it you'll see what how bad it is at the back but nobody sees the back as long as it's Hell, like leave these tabs on to keep the stickiness there to keep the tension on this part and yeah it looks good there we are that's it done there now um now if you're worrying that this won't last long or whatever i've had it on the the other one for a long time a long time through the winter and everything and it's lasted perfectly fine so don't worry about the way it looks at the back that will hold because it held for me before Right, so if you're wondering if this will last, you'll see that just here, just there, and over here, that small little bit there, 
They're the only pieces that actually fell off. Well, not even fell off, but just sort of came down on the uh, on the original one that I'd done. So now I have these two done. Um, but this I've had this on for months now. I can't even remember when I done that. I just haven't had time to put the rest of them on. But yeah, so the window tint does work, but I would suggest you wrap um, further around in this part. So give yourself more to work with and wrap right right in behind it. Um, but that's all. Like it still looks fine. It looks perfectly, you know, straight and whatever. Apart from just these parts here that stick down a little bit. You can't see that anyway from from up here. You can't see it. It's only when you get down low you can kind of see it there. You know, you can kind of see it. Anyway, now I'm going to put in the parking sensors. They were difficult. There's a bit of in here. There we go. That's one in. Wow, that wasn't easy. Right, so I have them all in here now. All I need to do is connect up the parking sensor um, cable to this here. This one here is my fog and this one here is the parking sensor. Now, there we go. So all the parking sensors are in. This is tinted and new light bulbs in as well. And these are the other color it does. So this is like a, a lime green kind of color. And this is like a you know, kind of a normal halogen kind of colour, like a four and a half thousand, five thousand. This is when it's six thousand, six thousand, six thousand. So it's all six thousand now. Even my high beams can go six thousand and three thousand. So you white and yellow. And there it is with the yellow or three thousand um high beams. And there they are all yellow. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Okay, so that's the end of the video. If you'd like to help out the channel in any way whatsoever, um, I do have a PayPal down below. You could just throw something into the PayPal, that'd be great. Uh, you could also just leave a like on the video. You could comment, you could subscribe, you could share, you could watch the video again, or watch some of the other videos that I have, or you could even click on the affiliate links that I have. Any of the Amazon affiliate links that I have, uh, I will try to list stuff down below. And if you do click on them, um, I will get a small commission. You don't get charged Amazon for bringing you custom to Amazon. They give me a commission off of what you buy. So yeah, if you could do that, that'd be great. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye-bye.